Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you guys how I am going to build my Denver International Airport. This is a brand new model airport I have been working on and I'm going to show you guys how to build it. The first thing I like to do when I am building my model airport is to head over to Google Maps as you can see in the top left and kind of look over at the airport. Um, it does get a lot of detail. Here at the airport, you can see the exact design of the terminal. You can see how many gates there are. You can see where they are. You can even see the colors that you can later use for your paint scheme. So you can see for Denver, that I'll be using a lighter gray for the taxiways and runways and a darker gray for the parking area. So that's something that'll be very useful for your airport. And I recommend doing that. The next step after looking over at Google Maps and deciding which airport you want to do is to draw out your plan. So I did draw out my plan here for Denver International Airport. It is pretty similar to the realistic airport, but Denver is a huge airport, so that's one thing. If the airport you want to do is huge, you can modify it any way you want. So the real Denver Airport has six runways. I only put one here and one here. I do have the three concourses as well as the taxiways. So try to make your plan as realistic as you want it to be for your airport. After I have drawn out a plan on the paper of the model airport I'd like to do, I'm going to find the dimensions of the length and width of the board I want and cut it to the exact dimensions. After you have come up with a plan for your model airport and purchased the board, as you can see, I did right here. I actually purchased two of it and cut it to the length I need. Then you're going to find your base um, paint color. Mine is going to be this light gray. I will show you guys the tab thing. So I'm going to paint the entire board of this color. And then once I'm done, I can do all the other details on top of it. Next, I'm going to cue a time lapse of me painting the airport so you guys can see exactly how I do it. There we have the first coat done. If you're gonna do multiple coats, wait about 30 minutes between each one. But if you do primer or you have primer in the paint, then you don't really need to do more than one coat. After I have painted the base coat onto my airport, I usually lay down a few tables to rest my airport on. You can also put it on the ground or build your own tables. But if you're looking for a great brand of tables, I recommend these Lifetime tables as the brand name, as you can see, Lifetime. They do last forever. I probably have these tables for like five, six years and nothing's ever happened. So after you get the board, I recommend getting some tables set up for the airport. After you have picked out your board, I do recommend putting down some one inch foam that you can find at Home Depot as it really helps support the board. After you have laid down all your foam, it should look something like this. Depending on the color of your foam, it'll look different. But after you have laid down all the foam, you are now ready to put the board on top of the table and then on top of the foam to start doing some detailing to the airport. As you can see here, I have my base coat down for my airport. 
and I will be sectioning off different areas and painting it different colors because if you do look at the Denver airport, the terminal areas are much darker than the taxiway and runway areas. So I'll be using this frog tape brand. That is the best brand. Oh, my finger was in front of it. There you go. Frog tape, that is the best brand to section off stuff and paint it. That way it won't leak. So I'll get back to you guys after I have painted off the little section using the frog tape. Once you have your frog tape down, it should look something like the green right there. And then once you have it sectioned off, you can start painting the other area. Just make sure you run your finger across the very edge to put it down. Make sure no paint gets underneath. After you do paint down the other sections, I do recommend waiting about 15 to 20 minutes before peeling up the frog tape so it has time to cure. I did wait about 15 minutes before peeling it up and then after those 15 minutes were over I started peeling it up and I really did like the results. This is why I do use frog tape every single time because it does leave that nice crisp line with no paint leaking underneath of the frog tape. As you can see I have taped off the other sections that I will be painting for my board and we'll get straight into painting. As you can see, I have sectioned it off and painted the different areas, so I'm going to wait about 15 minutes and then pull up the frog tape. It is now time to pull up the frog tape, and as you can see, it did leave a very clear um, line that was very sharp and did not have any paint underneath, which is exactly why I do love frog tape. And I'm so excited for the future of Denver International Airport because I'm thrilled how it has been turning out and am very excited for episode two of the building project. And here is the finished product with all of the paint done and taking off all of the frog tape. That does conclude today's upload of the first ever building Denver International Airport episode one. Episode two will be coming in about one month where we'll be fine tuning some more details, also adding the gate markings and working on two of the runways. So thank you so much for watching and if you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.